Welcome to Ghostly. Is the Clown Motel haunted? As always, we're your host. I'm Pat. And I'm Rebecca. This is part two, the final episode in our clown theme month of November. <laughs> you remind me of Big Brother right now. <laughs> uh, I started to hear about the Clown Motel when we were doing research of some of the most haunted places in the U.S., and the Clown Motel came up, and I was instantly like, oh, I want to do an episode on that. Yeah, and then you sent it to me, and I was like, uh, yeah, that's a definite yes. Yeah, we just <laughs> had so many other things that we wanted to do as well. So going into our second year, we we now can do some of the stories that we really wanted to do, but just weren't the big stories, you know? Yeah, no, but these are, I like doing some of these. I mean, not every episode is this, but doing a place that people could actually go. Yeah, And, and I this is go. a big, I, I want to go. I mean, yeah. this is a big uh, destination. Yeah, well, what's there not to love? A creepy motel that is next to an even creepier cemetery and then add in clowns? I. That's it. Yeah, right, that's it. I, I mean, yeah. Uh, I have had the chance to read a lot of cool stories and watch a bunch of YouTube videos about the Clown Motel. Uh, that Rhett and Link did a did a commercial for the town of Tonopah, mm. but now it's no longer on YouTube. So I'm reading about it, but I can't watch the commercial. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, it was like, Tonopah, we're different. <laughs> 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 but yeah, there's a lot of videos out there, a lot of stories. Yeah, I would love to stay there. But the rooms are kind of gross. Well, I've actually heard there's a new owner, which I'm sure we'll yeah. talk more about, but uh, they are redoing the room. So well, if it's been redone. Yeah, but the rooms are $60 a night to stay there. So, I mean, it's never going to be a five-star hotel. I guess that's true. It's not even a hotel. It's a motel. So, I mean, truth in advertising, you're right. staying at a motel. So. Yep. so would you stay at the Clown Motel, Rebecca? Ooh, that is a good question. I think I would. I'd only want to do one night. I mean, I couldn't do more than that. I mean, clowns scare me, but yeah. it's not... Like too too crazy though yeah. maybe after staying there it would be well let's get your friend Stacy to come with <laughs> Stacy would she could never, have her own room never even she would never <laughs> even want to drive up she would want to have nothing to do with it oh, whatsoever. Come on. <laughs> all right, so before we get into all the spookiness of the Clown Motel, let's see if there's any listener mail. Rebecca, what do you have? I've got a story. From one of our listeners, Adam Gibson. Okay. And he sent us a whole bunch of them. So mm -hmm. uh, I, I picked a couple of them that I thought were, were pretty great. Yeah, so we might read the rest in a future episode. We might, yeah. Uh, okay, so these encounters, he says, happened shortly after his wife Nina's father and his mother passed away. They passed away within 10 days of one another in 2018. Oh. Mm. So very sorry um, for both of you yeah. um, with that. Um, okay. So first one, Nina and I were sitting on the couch watching TV and we looked over at our dog, Jack, and he was just staring nervously and intensely at the laundry room, which connected to our garage. Then we heard the door to the garage open, stay open for a second and gently close like someone came into the laundry room. Jack didn't bark like he normally would or anything. He just kept staring at the laundry room door for like 10 minutes and we could not break his attention for anything, which is not like him. I got up to check the laundry room and nothing was there. There was no draft, no one in the garage and no draft in the garage. Wow. Yeah. I, you know, you know me, I love anything with, with animals seeing yeah. stuff. Right. Uh, and then just one more kind of right after this, um, Nina was sleeping on the couch and I was sleeping with the TV on in the bedroom and I woke up around 2.45 a.m. However, when I woke up, there was a dark shadow figure standing over me on the side of the bed and I flipped out, threw myself from it so hard, I threw myself on the other side of the bed. When I looked back up, it was gone. See, that's what Vox should have done when he was <laughs> surrounded by his figure. So there you go. We got uh, doors opening by themselves and uh, creepy dark shadow figures, which see previous episode on shadow figures. <laughs> wow, yeah. 
Okay. Well, I can't debate those because that's listener mail. That's listener so, mail. And they didn't specifically say, Pat, have at it. No, no, they didn't. So. Well, yeah. So, it, But if you guys have any stories uh, to share, again, they don't have to be long, right? As we just saw, it could just be some like weird, creepy thing that happened to yeah. you or to someone you know. Send it in. Uh, info at ghostlypodcast.com. Yeah. Couldn't remember there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it's so let's best. just get into the episode. No, I no, think. no. Maybe we'll do yeah, the history have, right no, now. No, we've got an exciting thing to what? do. What exciting thing? Uh, the polls. Oh, that's never exciting. Oh, no, it's always exciting. Did I win? Um, No. Oh, well, then we don't need to do this part. It's time for the polls. Mm. It's time. Okay. So it was 53%. Per- Wait, hold on. What did we talk about? What did we do? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. The polls were... Uh, does John Wayne Gacy's ghost still haunt this earth? No. <laughs> well, 53% of voters said yes. Oh, come on. And 47% said no. So oh. it's actually pretty close. Man, I was Closer watching, than a lot of our votes. I was watching these, these polls as they were happening, and every day I'd look at it, and it was like, there was one time I was in the lead. <laughs> oh really? I yeah. missed that. I oh, never it was, saw that. It was a great day for me. I wanted. <laughs> I was trying to figure out how to stop the polls right then. You <laughs> kept the polls like open that. forever too. No, it was a week. But rem- I posted oh, them a yeah. little late, so yeah. I apologize for that, everybody. But remember, remember, the polls are out on Facebook. Yes, the polls are on Facebook. And what's our Facebook page? Uh, Facebook dot com slash Ghostly Podcast. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, just absolutely. Search for Ghostly Podcast. I like to just throw these random questions at you. Uh, to see if you're prepared. Yeah. You're prepared. I am. Because actually, I didn't remember it right off the top of my head, <laughs> but I'm glad you were prepared. I got it. All right. So are we going to do a ghost story? Yeah. You want right. to do the ghost story? Yeah, All right. Let's do the ghost story. Okay. Imagine you're taking a trip across the country. One of those ones you dream of where you just have the time to drive and stop at any interesting place you find along the way. When you make... It out west, you can't believe what you find. A motel filled with clowns. How crazy, kitschy, and cool. So you decide to stay the night. The owner is super sweet and even walks you to your room. But before he leaves, he warns you, some people have said the place is haunted, probably due to the old cemetery right next door. You laugh, that's so silly, It's getting late, so you decide to just watch a little TV before bed. While you're watching, you hear footsteps above you. How annoying that the floors don't mask the sounds. A little bit later, you hear three knocks on the door. You go to look, but no one is there. Maybe some kids are running around playing tricks. Though you didn't hear any footsteps around by the door. You go back to your show, but... Five minutes later, another three knocks. Again, no one is there. No one is outside the door. You decide to go down to the lobby and report these people knocking and the footsteps above you that just won't stop. When you get there, the owner tells you that he's confused. No one is staying in the room above you, and there aren't any kids staying at the motel right now. He excuses himself because he's got to go check on something, but promises to come back and help you figure out what's going on. So you stand there waiting, surrounded by clowns of all shapes, sizes, and faces. It's a little overwhelming. All of a sudden, you notice something. One of the clowns is moving. No, (laughs) that can't be, you tell yourself. But then another one turns on, and you look down to see the foot moving on the large clown sitting on the rocking chair in the front of the display. At that moment, the owner returns, and everything stops. Breathing heavily, you tell him that you're sorry, but you can't stay. The owner gives a sad smile and says that he understands. He goes with you to get your things. You apologize to him again, and he says, yeah, no, this happens a lot. And then when you leave, you don't look back. Wow. There you go. Okay. Again, based on my research. Yeah. Fictionalized story. Fictionalized. So made up. (laughs) 
not the whole thing, just <laughs> parts of it. Well, fiction is made up. So. <laughs> based on a true story. It can be based on a true story, but it's still fiction. <laughs> fiction means made up. Just so everyone knows, the ghost story right there is made up. Don't use that for your voting purposes. <laughs> okay. All right, so why don't we just jump right into the history of the Clown Motel? Let's do it. So the Clown Motel is really not that old compared to all the other stories that we've told on Ghostly. It's probably one of the more, I, I, would, I think this is the most modern um, place that we have ever done a Ghostly episode on. Oh, okay. Uh, it is located in Tonopah, Nevada, at the midway point between Las Vegas and Reno. Tonopah has a relatively small population between 1,200 and 2,500 people. That was according to the 2010 census. Okay. That's, you know, the most famous census. Right. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I think in order to fully understand the history of the Clown Motel, we need to understand the history of the town of Tonopah, Nevada. Okay. So Nevada became the 36th state to join the U.S. on Halloween 1864. I thought that was really cool. It was on Halloween. Mm. And so Nevada's climate was very harsh, and, and it didn't take well to settlers. So there were some small Mormon settlements that touched upon the Nevada's border. But nobody really wanted to live there. Poor Nevada. Right? Well, that changed, though. In 1858, silver was discovered in the area. And after that, little boom towns would spring up from place to place with the hopes of somebody finding their fortune. There's silver in them there hills. <laughs> there ain't room for both of us in this town. <laughs> a skeptic and a believer. <laughs> <laughs> so this continued until politics changed in about 1910. And then after that, 1920, things started drying up a little bit. Gotcha. So um, before that happened, around 1900 saw the birth of Tonopah. Nevada. So the story goes, a prospector named Jim Butler found some silver-rich ore in the area while he was searching for a donkey and wandered off during the night. He took shelter near a rock outcropping, and when he woke up, he saw the animal. So he picked up a rock, and he went to go throw it at the, at the donkey because he was so furious and frustrated I'm not liking of chasing this guy. it down. Well, when Jim picked up that rock, he noticed that it was unusually heavy. It turned out to be silver rich ore, and the entire area he had stumbled upon became the second richest silver strike in Nevada history. Wow. Yeah. Uh, with a mining town that has hit its mark, people flock to it, right? Yeah. So they want to have their chance of finding silver. This also brings with it. Things needed for living and for visitors to come visit. So saloons often come next. I mean, that's the first thing you need, right? right? In a town is yeah. the saloon. You need a saloon. Um, with the saloons comes gambling. And towns start to form if the silver keeps coming. Right, because they got money to spend at the saloon, money yep. to spend gambling. Yep, and a lot of saloons had like rooms too you could rent. Ah, so. sure. Some people make more money with the gambling than anyone ever gets with the silver, though. Would you think that'd be you? Yeah. Like you'd be more of the gambler than the silver finder? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to be out there in the Nevada heat. <laughs> Jeez, no. Uh, so when you have a mass of people coming to any area, what do you think happens? What do you think the most inevitable thing to happen is? Um, that uh, it gets bigger and everyone is uh, it prospers and it makes a lot of money and everything's well, amazing. Well, people die. Oh. Sorry, Rebecca. Darn. So when people die, you need a cemetery. And Old Tunapaw Cemetery was founded on May 7th, 1901 with the burial of John Randall Weeks. We believe he was a miner. It doesn't really specify that. So like a miner meaning like a like a kid? No. Or a miner meaning like someone in the ground. Yeah, going. with the with the light on his helmet. Right, and, right. Yeah, and searching kind of for the silver. Okay. Yeah. Hi ho. Hi ho. Sure. That kind of Okay. That was a dwarf, I think, though. Wasn't it, well, it? but they were miners. Okay. Okay, Anyways, whatever, whatever. On. Um but this cemetery only stayed open until April nineteen eleven. 
so just under 10 years after the first person was buried in it. But it amassed around 300 residents. Oh, that is a lot for a small town. Right? In 10 years. Yeah. Only one person has been buried there since its close in 1911, and that was Mr. Coombs in 1996. Wow. Because he asked for it. Aw, that was nice of them to let yeah, him do Mr. that. Yeah, Mr. Coombs, yeah. Old Mr. Coombs. Yeah. In 1902, there was a mysterious plague in Tunapah that claimed over 30 lives. While what exactly caused people to die from this plague is still unknown, in an old Desert Evening News article... From April 18, 1905, it is said that doctors seem to think it is caused by unsanitary conditions of the camp. Mm. Many people decided to leave Tonopah at that time. I guess so. But some stayed to make more money. You know, there's money you're willing to risk the unsanitary conditions. Yeah. On February 23, 1911, there was a fire in the Tonopah Belmont mine that took the life of another 17 people. They were all buried in Old Tonopah Cemetery. So these kind of mining towns don't last forever, usually. And the mine started drying up in the 1920s. And if you look at the population at this time, it had less than half the people than it did 15 years prior. Since the late 20th century, this this was really interesting, Tonopah has relied on nearby military Tonopah Test Range as its main source of employment. The military has used the range in surrounding areas as a nuclear bomb test site, a bombing range, and a base of operations for the development of the F-117 Nighthawk. Wow. So I'm hoping that they aren't still using it as a nuclear (laughs) test site. Yeah, but think about that in combination with a clown motel it's so weird like just like i mean okay so 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 far we haven't even hit the clown motel yet like you've just laid out the background yes so like if you told me that like let me tell you the story of this town topola and you give me this history tonopah sorry tonopah and you give me this history and you you know all this stuff like the last thing that i would think you'd be like and the other thing they're famous for is the clown motel <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's just It sounds like Toxic Avenger. (laughs) That's what it sounds like. So the Clown Motel history. This part is a little shorter because there isn't much history. The Clown Motel is just under 35 years old. Oh, yeah. I would definitely say that's one of the newest, if not the newest, of our things. So there's no major history here. I mean, you're not going to be startled by any of these things that I'm saying here. The Clown Motel was founded by Leona and Leroy David in 1985. They wanted to open at this location because their family was buried in Old Tonopah Cemetery. The Clown Motel is right next door to the cemetery. Okay, so... Spitting distance. Right. So, I can't... I don't know. That's not where I'm at. So, it's like, in my (laughs) mind, if I'm... I'm like, all right, we got the money, we got the loan, whatever it is. We're going to open up a a fun motel that people will want to stay at. Uh, Where should we do it? Let's do it next to the cemetery where our relatives are buried. Yeah, I I don't know. Uh, Maybe we could talk more about that in the debate section. I guess so. So they knew that they wanted it to be a clown-based motel, and they decorated the walls with their clown collection. (laughs) The collection has since um, grown tremendously, although the rooms don't have that much clown stuff in them. No, I think it's more in the lobby. In the lobby, there's over 600 clowns. Wow including a Ronald McDonald that greets you when you walk in. Yes. But not like the Ronald McDonald you think of nowadays, like the like the 1960s Ronald yeah, McDonald. Yeah, it's like an older, yeah. yeah. Uh, they ran the motel until 1995 when they sold it to Bob Perchetti. Mm-hmm. I have not had a chance to practice these names. <laughs> it looks, it sounds right to me. So at some point I might get one wrong, especially there is a... Um, a name of a, there is there is an ethnic name coming up that I might stumble on. So Perchetti finally decided to sell the property with one stipulation, though. So he was there for like 20-something years or 30 years or something like that. He okay. was there for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Um, he decided to finally sell the property with one stipulation, though. Whoever bought it had to keep it as a clown motel. That was really important for him. Yeah. Well, because I think it was it 
do you remember? Did you? Uh, it was. It wasn't that long ago that it was sold. It was not, and in fact, at first they wouldn't release the name of the person that bought it. Mm. But they finally did. A man named Hami Anad. Yeah, Hami Anad. Hami Anad. Anad. Okay. Yeah. Um, he conveniently um, he has a fascination for clowns. Well, then there you go. And his, and a family member of his said that they wanted to buy him a hotel but it had to cost less than a million dollars. Oh. So the price of the clown motel, it was 900,000. Wow. So, yeah, so he bought the he bought it and um he lives there too. Okay. Yeah, and he, you know, works like all the time. <laughs> so that's about all I have for the history of the clown motel. All right. I I like it. Well, now I wanted to say too, I think I read um that a lot of the collection is uh, people send them clowns. Yes, to they add do. to the collection. And if you bring him a clown, you could sign it, and uh, he usually lets you put it wherever you want. Cool. Although the shelves are pretty packed, right? Yeah, now. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now the one clown that you were talking about that tapped his foot. Yes. That is a very spookyish clown. Hmm. And maybe that's going to come up in the debate. Yes, yeah. I think it might. All right, so let's just get into the debate. All right. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Okay. You first. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, like you, I also read and watched, read a lot of articles, watched a lot of videos. So I really enjoyed watching those YouTube super videos. Super fun. Yeah. Super fun. Um, and some of them were paranormal investigator people. But others were not. Yes. They were just people staying at the hotel. Yes. Right? Okay. So several of these experienced doors opening and closing on their own. Yes. Through, uh, that was like one common theme that showed up. Mm-hmm. Um, there was one video where there they came into a room and they found a cabinet door open. Mm-hmm. And they were like, wait, was that open before? Not wait, whatever. They weren't sure. So they closed it. They left. They did a bunch of other stuff. They came back. Actually, I should say a bunch of other stuff, but they left. They were looking at some other areas. They came back and another of the cabinet doors was open. Wow. Now, that was just one story that I wanted. To, I just wanted to pick one, but there were several. Yeah. I saw a YouTube video where three guys were kind of making fun of it. And uh, the one guy, a TV came on in the middle of the night. And so he, he already had his bathroom light on and he turned on another light. Yeah. And he was surprised he didn't get much sleep. <laughs> it was <laughs> kind of funny. Yeah. And then uh, another guy, um, he he said he put a bunch of stuff in the fridge because each room has a little disgusting looking uh, yeah. fridge. <laughs> and uh, he put some stuff in the fridge. He closed the door and the door opened. Yes. That's one of the other ones that I was thinking about. Yeah. So what do you think about these uh, doors opening and closing on their well, own? You know, what I am thinking is that the ground is kind of soft over there. And I don't know how level the Clown Motel is. If you've seen pictures of the Clown Motel, I don't know how much money they invested in the foundation of this motel. It is, you know, uh, and I reached out to the Clown Motel for comments and they did not reply. Never heard anything from them. So I can say whatever I want about the Clown Motel. (laughs) It is dingy. Well, again, I've seen some ones that it, the newer videos, it looks fine. I mean, for a motel, like yeah. it's okay. Especially the bathrooms. That's where like, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I don't know, Nevada and a mining town, I guess I wouldn't think of that as being um, soft, but I suppose the cemetery is right there. So it can't be that hard of a ground. Nevada I suppose. is like a desert. And if you look at pictures of the actual cemetery, uh, it's not your typical cemetery where, you know, there's grass growing. There's no grass, of course. No. And they mark everything off by like stones. Yeah. It looks like a really old school thing. So I'm just saying it, it's possible that that, that that could be a reason. Now, I don't know because I'm not there. And even if I was there, I mean, even if I leveled, did a level today, as I said, I think the ground is soft. So I think it might move a little bit. I'm sure it's not perfectly level, though. So that could explain why some of the doors open and close. Another thing could be these are 
probably not the most expensive doors and probably not the most expensive cabinets. I'm just imagining. Okay. And actually, tell you the truth, thinking about some of the pictures I've seen of the rooms, there's not many cabinets in these rooms. No, all. this was like it. he, the owner, the new owner, yeah. let these two girls, they were there investigating. Okay. And so he was letting them walk around in more of the like behind the scenes areas. Okay, gotcha. And that's where they saw the cabinets. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you want another one? Yeah. Okay. Um, so another paranormal activity that several visitors mentioned was mysterious knocking and footsteps. So again, those are things, these are all things that I mentioned in my story. Um, uh, but one story I read had a guest hear footsteps above them. Uh, but then when they asked the owner if someone was staying above them, he said that there wasn't. Um, and another video had guests hearing someone knock on the door, but no one was ever outside. Okay. So for this one. Um, I would like to say that the Tonopah city itself, the town itself, advertises the Clown Motel as being haunted and advertises the town as being haunted. Why would people live in this haunted town? I This is a publicity thing that they do. The Clown Motel brings them revenue that they wouldn't have. People come just for the Clown Motel, although most people are truckers that are like, driving through the night and see a $60 room, so they go for it. But, um, yeah, it's, I don't know. I, I, so you're saying it's like a conspiracy, so the town, like, hires people to, like, stay and to, like, go and, like, no, walk around. No, I'm not in saying that system. at all. <laughs> I'm not saying that at all. What I am saying is that the town advertises this as a haunted venue. When you go in haunted venues, you're... you're Going to be at a heightened alert. Gotcha. I don't imagine that the walls in this place are very thick. Well, again, though, but if no one's staying above you and, you know, you like someone knocks and it's I can't imagine the rooms are very big. So it's not like it takes you a while to open the door that like you wouldn't see like whoever had knocked. Well, knocking could be someone next door. So they could knock next door, you you hear the knock, or it could be the TV. I mean, how many times have you <laughs> thought you heard a doorbell or thought you heard knocking because you heard it on a TV? Yeah, interesting. And, well, I mean, I'm honestly, has that ever happened to you? Oh, yeah. No, that has happened to me. So Absolutely. It's, not, it's not crazy to think that this is a possibility, but it could be somebody knocking next door and the person could be right there by the door. Let them in. You go to the door to look. Nobody's there then. Mm. The the footsteps above you could be somebody walking to the other side of the hotel to investigate more of the area. As I said, they're staying there a lot of times because of the paranormal. Yeah. So I, they want to investigate these I things. I guess I just would say, think like if it was somebody walking around above me that I would hear the footsteps like, coming in and going out if it was that much that I could hear it and then if it was somebody next door opening the door like I would hear that because maybe if the walls are that thin maybe but the doors might be quiet I don't know I mean there is a lot of scientific reasons why this could happen also too when people come to the hotel um clowns can be creepy for some people I don't know if you've ever heard of that um there is a term for it, and I think it's called calrophobia. Uh, it's cowl, uh, yeah, cowlrophobia. Cowl, cowl, like you have a cowl. Yeah, cowlrophobia. Yes, extreme or irrational fear of clowns. Yeah. So I mean, people go there with this, um, with this idea that they are already really terrified. When you're in a spooky movie, do you get more scared? Or do you like, I mean, I would say you do. You're probably at a heightened um, alert because you know something's going to be jumping out. So as soon as it does, that's a, it's going to scare you even more. I don't know. When I'm prepared, I feel like I do a little better. But I get your point. I've seen you watch horror <laughs> movies. You're never prepared. <laughs> you are never prepared. You, you might say you love them, but you are scared to death of them. I too. know, but I love it. I mean, you are the person that screams, like literally screams. Not all the time, just sometimes. Okay, what about the time the lights went out? 
Yeah, that was pretty scary. You want to tell them about that? Oh, yeah. So I thought I already, I thought I did at some point, but that's okay. Um, yeah, so no, I was watching horror movies with my friends and uh, the power went out and the lights went out, but it was like right at the height of like a super <laughs> scary movie. And it, it, I, it, that was terrifying. That was terrifying. Yeah. And, uh, and then the, the carbon monoxide detector, when the power goes out, like beeps. <laughs> and it was just wow. like, what is the beeping? It was mm-hmm. terrifying. But I'll let you know, I did not scream. Somebody oh, else was wow. screaming. Oh, I thought that you screamed. No, there was another, we were watching, uh, when I watched the movie that was, um, I can never remember the name of it, but it's where they're splunking. It's like cave or cavern or something like that. But they're like underground. And there's a bunch of women. It's okay. so cool. It's such a good movie. But like, first of all, the such most- Such a good movie that you can't remember the I title. Know, it, was a, it was a while ago. But what was scary about it is like the, the most terrifying part was actually like watching people splunking in a cave. Uh, but anyways, all I remember is there was a moment where I screamed and then I felt so scared that I, I made myself scream a second time to release the energy because <laughs> I was so scared. I, I love how you think this out. out too, I did. Afterward, I was like, I screamed and then I felt the need to scream again. <laughs> All right. So let me ask you this. If we hopped in the car right now mm-hmm. and we drove out to Nevada mm-hmm. to stay at the Clown Motel. Okay. And we didn't have any paranormal activity. Would you feel let down a little bit? No, I wouldn't. I now I don't know. You know, I'm I'm a believer, but I will say in general, I haven't. I don't typically have a lot of things happen around me. Yeah. To people I know, when I'm with them, sometimes a few things might happen, um, but I don't. So it wouldn't surprise me. Let's just say that that yeah. nothing happened, but that wouldn't stop me from believing that it would happen to other people well some people would be disappointed if they went all the way out there that this was part of their trip that they were taking just to see the paranormal and there was nothing there at all i gotcha so kind of so you kind of want something to happen right but again well we'll get into it in the final arguments but okay interesting okay so last one okay um so i also mentioned this in the story there are lots of reports of the clowns in the lobby turning on themselves like they're ones that are mechanical yeah. and they turn on yep. Yep. or moving on their own uh for uh the, actually the owner talks about different employees seeing things having things happen um and then um there's two videos i watched that actually recorded the clowns moving yeah i saw one um it was a longer video and i tried to i only watched like the first five minutes of it I think it's the one I sent to you, actually. Yes, that one. And in the beginning, um, you know, they were talking with the owner, and all of a sudden, the one clown moved. Yes. And and they turned to him, Hami, right? Yeah. And they said, how often does that happen? And he said, it's never moved. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then the other one with the two girls, they videotaped the uh the, the clown that you mentioned in yes. the um, in the front, the, in the rocking chair. The foot was moving. Yeah. So... There you go. All right. So we were talking a little bit about what kind of person would open a motel right next door to a cemetery and at that make it a clown motel. The kind of person that wants to scare people. The kind of person that would charge $60 a night because your rooms are going to be filled up pretty often because just the concept of it, just the idea of it, how spooky it is looking at it. I think that this is all just smoke and mirrors. Like, I think that that thing that moved in that video, like when I looked at Hami's face, I think it's moved before. I think it moves sometimes. And I think that they're okay with that. (laughs) Yeah, that doesn't mean it's not paranormal. It could be mechanical, though. (laughs) <laughs> and that would not be paranormal. That is normal. These That one was mechanical. Yes. Uh, the other one is on a rocking chair. Yes. So if something hit it, it would move. No, but the rocking chair was not moving. Like we could see in the video, it was just the foot moving. I don't know. I, You know, I think that these things are made up. I think that these are paranormal people that are there to investigate. And I believe that They want to get a million views of their YouTube video. 
wonder how many views was on that one. I'm sure it was over 100,000. Yes. That's when you start making money Mm -hmm. on YouTube, when you have over 100,000. So that's why I keep Ghostly around 177 subscribers, (laughs) because I want to keep everything legit. I don't want to make a million (laughs) dollars yet. I mean, if anyone wanted to subscribe to our YouTube channel, we would welcome it. I know there's a really tight list. I mean, (laughs) we only accept applications. No, I'm just kidding. But I'm just saying, though, that, I mean, you can kind of judge these things by how many people are interacting with it. And um, that's a lot of interactions. And it would be very easy to fake something like that. Mm, All right. I don't know. I mean, I to me, it just seems like there's too many people too many times. But what was weird to me is that there wasn't a lot of information about when it was opened. I couldn't find a lot about like I, like you found some stuff. I didn't find a lot. Most of the I stuff have no I no problem f- finding information. About yeah, I don't it know. Open. It was weird, but most of the stuff I found was more recent. Um, which again was was interesting and fun for me with this episode because we don't always have that. No, um, we don't. So no. it was it was great. It was like no, this is like from three months ago. These people saw this crazy stuff. Yeah, happening. I really I really enjoyed that that aspect of it. But I still, I mean, and even though I think it's fake, and I think it makes perfect sense that it's fake, I still enjoy it. I still get something out of that. Um. I mean, I love to be able to suspend my belief. That's why I would buy a scratch-off ticket. And when I buy a scratch-off ticket, I buy one that's like the $2,000 a week for the rest of your life because I want that dream. And I don't scratch it off right away. I stop and I think, man, what would I do with $2,000 a week for the rest of my life? Would I quit my job? Would I stay working? Would I buy a house? What would I do? That's a lot of money, right? Yeah. I mean, especially if it's supplemental, if you're still working your regular job and making $2,000 a week on the lottery. So I love living the dream. That's what this is to me. Even though I think this is fake, I love living that dream. (laughs) All right. You ready to do these closing (laughs) arguments? Yeah, let's do these closing arguments. All right. So this is our last chance to convince you to vote our way. We are each given one minute of uninterrupted time. We will time each other on our cell phones to keep each other honest. And Rebecca, are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Here goes. Okay. So I do believe that the (laughs) Clown Motel is haunted because there are too many reports that have happened. Um, And it's by the cemetery, which was crazy. Um, But anyways, it was just weird to, uh, to me when I was doing the research that no matter what article I read, no matter what video I watched, people that didn't know each other, that or staying in different rooms and different times that they had similar things happen to them. And it uh, this was one of the first times I saw more video proof than I have in other times um, of just things moving, things opening and closing, voices, um, just crazy, crazy stuff happening. Uh, and so to me, the, the, uh, the, the amount of, of evidence um, is just what convinces me that it's true. Uh, that's right. it. I'm out. Okay. Wow. Drop the mic, huh? Yeah. All right. I am ready. You're ready? I'm ready. Okay. You ready? And go. So the Clown Motel, um, I think, looks really spooky. I think it's really interesting. But things that look spooky like that, are they always spooky? Rebecca talked about how they all had similar experiences. These are similar experiences everybody has when they think something's haunted. They they all say that they heard voices. They always things open and closing. This is ongoing. Everybody can say that they've had the same experience because they all know the story. They all know. Next thing you, you're going to tell me is that there's a woman in white that hitchhikes outside the clown motel. It would be it would be the classic story. So I do not believe it's real. Why would you open up a clown motel next to a cemetery? A very weird looking old cemetery. Looks like an old west cemetery. I'm going to take my next five seconds just to tell you that it is absolutely fake. (laughs) 
<laughs> okay. Hey, Mike. Wow. Job. Yeah. There you go. Uh, I will just say one really quick thing because I didn't put it in whoa, here because it whoa, wasn't whoa. the clown motel. Whoa, a quick thing. This is after the closing argument. I just, just there's like a there's like a school nearby, um, and that's supposedly also haunted. And there's a woman in red that oh. haunts. This oh, the oh, then I totally believe it now. So, no. <laughs> Again, we didn't. That wasn't part of our thing, so I, I didn't put it in there. But, but I just wanted to mention. But that. here's the thing: <laughs> who would visit Tonopah if you weren't in the military doing testing, nuclear testing now? And you know there wasn't a spooky clown motel, and nothing else was haunted. Well, maybe the military actually is like, no, we don't want people there. That's kind of weird. Actually, I'm surprised they allow. So they would. All nuclear this. bomb the clown motel <laughs> well or just you know encourage them to close Hami if you have anything to add to this <laughs> send it into info at ghostlypodcast.com and we would be happy to read your side absolutely I know Hami said that he's never seen anything yes paranormal happen. he does say that but he says that the clowns like him mm. yeah yeah <laughs> So I want to thank you all so much for listening. Please share us with your friends and family as word of mouth is our best advertisement. If you haven't done so yet, please hit the subscribe button and maybe even give us a rating and review on iTunes so even more people like you can find us. For our listeners in the U.S., happy Thanksgiving. We are definitely thankful to have you all in our lives. You make Ghostly the number one paranormal podcast to us and to so many more. So do you have anything to add in closing? Uh, just know that thank you very much uh, for listening. Again, happy Thanksgiving to those listening in the U.S. And uh, yeah, we would really love uh, if you hit that hit that button to um, subscribe. Uh, it's free and you can just listen uh, yes. every two weeks. It's great fun. Um, and yeah, if you've got iTunes, if you can give us a rating and a review, we'd love it. Yeah. Also, I want to say one more thing. Um, before we go, our friends over at Memoriam Development, which we are actually part of Memoriam Development, Ghostly isn't, but we are. We are actors, we are writers, we are entertainers, we are Producers, business people, whatever. I don't know, whatever you want to say. Yeah. Whatever you want to say, we, we do that for Memoriam. And they started a Kickstarter. You could find it at memoriamdevelopment.com on their site. Um, and... The Kickstarter is so that they could do their podcast independently, so that they do not have to have somebody telling them that they need to have X amount of numbers or anything like that. They, yeah, and have they want more to do control. it for the art. Yeah, they want to do it for the art. And we want our, we, we want our art to be free. Yeah, and we a, do. Yeah. But, I mean, we pay a lot of money to but have it. But we pay a lot of money for it to be free. Yeah. And, you know, they <laughs> they don't make any money at Memoriam. I'm just going to tell you, Yeah. you know, um, whenever they do something, if they break even, if they make any money, they pay their actors with it. Yeah. They're really good people. And one of the rewards you can get on the Kickstarter is to have podcast lessons from me. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Yeah. We'll do like a Zoom meeting, a virtual meeting, unless you live in the area. Yeah. And then you could actually is, meet them. Yeah. This isn't going to just be like a one time thing. Uh, it would take me a couple of lessons to get you going on podcasts, so I'm going to be available to you as long as it takes. There you go. Wow, that's a commitment. Uh, also, there's a lot of other great rewards. Yeah. There's you know, getting uh, to choose a character's name or yeah. even getting to uh, say, uh, create a line or make, make, make up a line for, for one of the people on the podcast to say. David, David Hickney. David Hickney. So their podcasts are more kind of fun, funny, Fiction. I, I see. Well, like, Dave, we aren't fiction. I Ghostly see, is totally nonfiction. Huh. Um, I see David David Hickney as being my rival. So if you could have <laughs> him say something about Ghostly being the best podcast, ah, that would be great. That would. Oh, oh man. Oh yeah. So get on that. Get on that, Ghostly listeners. So we will be talking about Whole House on yeah. the next episode that comes out on December 11th. I'm excited about this because we we actually went, this is a place that we've been. One year ago one today. One year ago today and it's taken us this long to get to a point where we could do the episode. So very excited. But people have requested Hull House. Oh, absolutely. And the Devil Baby. Devil Baby. Yeah, they've, they've requested this and, you know, I really think it's time. Mm-hmm. And who knows, maybe we can get somebody to come on the podcast. I yeah. haven't asked anybody yet, but maybe we can. Yeah. So, well, until next time, stay ghostly. Bye.